Hi everyone, in today's video, we're going to go through the last window action command, which is going to be the winsec command. Winsec command is a pretty big one, and it has a lot of different sub commands, as you can see in this list. And in this video, I'm going to go through all of these ones, except for the last one. The last one is going to be a separate video next time. And so if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Welcome back. So winsec command has this kind of syntax whereby you should be pretty familiar with these ones by now. And value parameter goes with the subcommand. Subcommands are these ones down here. These are pretty straightforward, except for maybe the region one. So that's going to be an entirely different video that is going to be uploaded after this one. So let me just go ahead and comment this out. Starting with the always on top. Always on top should be something that uh, most people by now should be familiar with. So for example, if you have a notepad window like that, that is active right now, it's going to be on top of all the windows. But if I clicked into another window, then obviously it gets sent to the background and therefore it won't show up anymore until you click on it um, from the taskbar or you do an alt tab or whatever. But if you make it always on top using this hotkey that I just created, by pressing the A key, this is going to be always on top now. If I clicked into other windows, this is not going to, well, the notepad window is not going to go to the background as it did before. If you had another uh, window that is trying to take over the spot, it doesn't get uh, hidden behind the other window. But if you do make the other window always on top as well, then it's going to compete with that notepad window for being on top of each other, just like it would normally do without the always on top active. So um, toggle is to toggle it on and off. So if you render hotkey once, then it's gonna make it always on top. If you render it twice, then it's gonna toggle it off. So it's not going to be always on top anymore. You can switch it with on and off as well. Um, if you just wanna switch it on or off. Sometimes you will have your window focus on system applications like a uh, task manager where your hotkey is not going to run unless you run the script as an admin. And so here is my task manager. For example, when you have your task manager activated, your hotkeys for setting windows always on top or any other hotkeys won't work unless you run the script as an admin while your focus is on a system application like task manager or task scheduler. So that's something to be mindful of if you hoping to you know, your hotkeys to run reliably while you even have these system applications in focus. And if you want to check the status of the status of Windows, then you can use something like like this one. So for example, you can use the winget command to check the extended style of the window so with this one right now i don't have the temporary script um, always on top and therefore when i go ahead and run it and press numpad zero while my focus is on the temporary scripts folder that's going to tell me that always on top is off but if i do go ahead and make it always on top i have my personal hotkey that does work by alt control and space that made this window always on top just now and if I go ahead and run the hotkey numpad zero, then it's going to confirm that always on top is on. So that's something that you can use to check the status of the always on top for Windows. And moving on to bottom, so the next sub command, bottom sets the bottom sets the window uh, to the bottom of all the other windows. So as you can imagine, um, let me just actually run the script first and then bring up my folder and then press the hotkey. This sends the window back to the bottom or down to the bottom. So if I run the hotkey again while I'm in Visual Studio Code, it's going to bring the temporary scripts folder back up. All looks as though it's going to bring it back up, but it's basically sent the Visual Studio Code to the background, to the bottommost position of all the other windows. That's why you're seeing this one. But as you can see, the temporary scripts folder doesn't really get activated. Your active window is still Visual Studio Code. It just got sent to the bottom of the stack. The opposite of that is top. Winset top is uh, 
it's apparently not very reliable so let me just go ahead and run it so as you can see just now i've just opened up my notepad and sent it to the background and tried to run it but it didn't work and the reasoning is is here sometimes the system default will have no effect due to the operating system's protection against applications that try to steal the focus from the user so a workaround in uh, this case is make the window sit always on top and then make it not always on top immediately after and if i go ahead and run it then as you can see i didn't activate this notepad as you can see it's not active it's grayed out um, but the notepad window did come to the surface and if i click it you'll see that it gets activated if i clicked elsewhere then because it's toggle on and off it didn't get made always on top so that's how you can um, replace the top command which uh, at most times it doesn't work and so previously i have shown you a script in one of my previous videos uh, which allows you to hide and show a window by using a hotkey you can also do that by setting the window to the bottom of the position and using that workaround for sending the window to the top of the position using always on top and so if i go ahead and run it this will allow me to uh, send this uh, folder to the bottom of all the other windows actually i just set the target window as this folder just now by running it once if i run it again then it's going to be sent to the bottom of the window so it will be down here as you can see if i run it again then it's going to do that always on top uh twice um and so it makes the window show up on the surface i've got win activate so that wasn't entirely necessary i can just take it out or if you don't want to activate the window you just want to have it seen uh showing up on top of the window so let me just take this out and try running it again target window set send it to the bottom and then run it again this one actually i have to click other window there we go there you go if i bring it up then it doesn't really get um activated if you want to do it that way instead of activating window then you can take out the win activate command as well so this is going to be uploaded on my website as per the usual so you can you'll be able to find this script now disable is to disable disable uh window so what i mean by that is i've got a notepad here if i disable this notepad it's not going to be able to um i don't know if i just ran let me just run it again not going to make me allow to click or do anything on this notepad window i can't click on the close button or the menu so this gets basically disabled i can't do anything about it i think if i do even if i do say for example alt f4 on it i think what's going to happen is it's not going to work on it so i just did the alt f4 it's not going to close out of that either so that gets that's how it gets disabled if you enable it then you should be able to as you can see i can highlight the notepad window i can click these menu items and i also can close out of that all right so that's enable and disable redraw redraw is something that is unfortunately not so much useful or at least in 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 my case um it attempts to update the appearance and context of windows so basically tries to redraw a window um, like this folder here but in most cases you don't need to redraw any windows i think only when it goes out of shape for whatever reason you might have to redraw it but the documentation of autoarch it does acknowledge it may not work with particular windows you should try win move command instead in that case but in my case i never had any reason to use redraw and so i'm just going to move on to the next one which is transparent transparent is a pretty cool function which allows windows to go semi-transparent or entirely transparent so for example i've got win set trends uh, 100 this number can be anything between zero which makes the window completely invisible 255 will make it completely visible and therefore if i go ahead and run this then it's going to make the notepad window go somewhat invisible but i'm still going to be able to click and move it around like that on top of other windows um and so if i reduce it then it becomes a lot more invisible if i reduce it down to even 
uh, a number one then it's going to be barely visible but I don't know if you notice but I can still click and play around with it move it around um, but if you change it to zero the problem with uh, changing this to zero is you're not going to be able to click on it if you if you make it completely invisible then you won't be able to see it entirely or click on it or do anything with it with your mouse at least and so if you bring it back up to 255 then that's going to be completely visible and what the documentation says i think is instead of making it to go back to 255 if you want to make it completely visible you should do transparent off and that's more safe than doing a 255 because apparently it redraws constantly if you set it to uh, 255 or something like that so the ideal is that you set it to uh, transparency off to uh, make it completely visible if you decide to do so so here's a little demo of how I'm going to make uh, my taskbar uh, go from invisibility by loop doing a loop to complete visibility and so I've got a loop of 255 uh, with a delay of 10 milliseconds each time and so this is going to run really quickly so if I go ahead and run it you'll be able to see my taskbar showing up from invisibility bit by bit so if I go ahead and run it then as you can see the taskbar went invisible for a little bit and then it showed up let me run it again it showed up uh, gradually like that so that's something some kind of uh, animation effect that you can apply to windows if you so wish trans color is trans color I've shown this uh, previously in a previous video trans color allows you to make a particular color in a window completely transparent so I've got as an example this code here which represents a purple bar color at the bottom of the visual studio code so this one right here you can find this with the windows spy if i bring up the windows spy here we go if i put my mouse cursor on top of the area that i want to get the color from um here is the color right here so pay attention to this one this is the color the color code is different because i've got the yellow circle around my mouse um, the color code for this purple one is this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And what that is going to make is this purple color go transparent. There we go. So you see how it's gone transparent. So if I put my other window on top of it and activate the Visual Studio code, as you can see, you can see through this bar here. You can click through it as well. You can see and click through it. Um, like that uh, if you make a particular color transparent so I'm just gonna go turn this off by converting this into off and then run it and the purple color comes back on I think I've got an example here I'm just gonna go and try and run it it's a website and so the color uh, being made transparent works on I think pretty much on any window so i'm going to go ahead actually let me just exit out of my yellow circle script all right there we go so let me get the color code of this color uh, which is dc1c1c as you can see right here it's it's going to change to dc1c13 i'm going to use that and i'm going to make that transparent so let me just go ahead and do just that win set trans color dc one c one three and that window is uh this one so i'm just going to use the application name go ahead and run it and as you can see the color of the red color even on a, a web browser like that my Chrome web browser, the script was still able to make the color invisible in this way. I'll just get out of that. Hi everyone, I started to realize how much longer this video is becoming compared to what I had originally expected. So I'm going to cut it short and end the video here. 
then upload the rest in the next round. I'm trying to keep the length of my videos within reasonable amount. And so hopefully that's understandable and I'll see you in the next video.